taking a peek at the Sync 3 screen inside of the Ford Explorer. So the Explorer technically has two different screens that are available. It's either this eight inch screen or there's a phablet style screen instead. That phablet is for the ST, the King Ranch and the Platinum. But if you wanna walk through another screen, you'll find it in the description of this video. Now, this smaller eight inch screen, it won't have factory navigation standard, but you could get it with factory nav right at time of ordering. If yours doesn't have navigation, you can still hook up through iPhones or Android devices using Apple CarPlay or Android Auto for Google Maps, Apple Maps, or Waze. And you can't just add in factory navigation afterwards either. You have to replace the entire screen in order to get it. So I'm at least gonna walk you through and show you all of the important features that you need to know in this. Starting off with the home screen. So home button along the very top brings you back to this main screen. You've got your current inside temperature. So if it was different driver passenger side, current time and then outside temperature. If you had factory nav, obviously you'd have a little map there. It would be a compass if you didn't have factory navigation, but you've got your current station that's playing if a phone was connected and then audio. So audio, you've got a ton of options. You've got AM, FM, Sirius XM and Bluetooth. If you had a USB stick with MP3s on it, that would show up as an option. If your phone was hooked up, so actually hold on, set one of these things up as we go. But if your phone was hooked up as well over Bluetooth, that would show up as an available option. So sources are gonna be whatever options are currently available for you inside the vehicle. So you can see there, USB device. This thing does not provide uh, support video playback though. So it's strictly gonna be audio playback, even if you're hooked up through Android Auto or Apple CarPlay. But mix, like I said, AM, FM, Sirius XM. If you were on Sirius XM, you've got a ton of options. You can go to this little guy in order to get a music notification for either the song or the artist. So if the song or artist comes on another station, it can notify you to let you know. It's pretty useful. You've got different options as well for tuning to stations, and that's the same way, like if you're on AM, FM, etc. If you wanted to save a preset, you could use the tuning rocker down the center stack to do that in order to change stations. You can direct tune along the very top, or you can use the voice command prompt on the steering wheel to change stations that way instead. But once you've tuned to the station you want to save, you're just going to press and hold. And that's going to save the station in for you very simply. Really straightforward. If you go into settings, you've got options for radio. I always recommend for preset pages, change it to the maximum number. Especially if you're going to rely on the radio right from the, uh, from the Sync 3 screen here. Because it gives you up to 30 individual presets. And as you can see, a mix of AM, FM, Sirius XM, etc. Now, if you were in Sirius XM... Go back to settings. This is now a Sirius XM button with a few other options. So you can do parental lockout if you wanted to, block explicit content, tune to start. You could lock out channels. You can skip channels and things like that too. So if you didn't want to listen to certain channels, you could lock out whichever ones you don't want to listen to as you scroll. It's kind of nice. But it works the same way, AM, FM, etc. I'll take you through the settings in just a minute, but that's the basics of using the radio inside of this thing. So next up, he's adding in a phone. So as you can see there, as of right now, there are no phones connected, but... Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. Just looking for, most likely come out, yeah, Ford Explorer. You can change that vehicle name, and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up. Do I want to allow contacts and favorites to sync up? I'm going to say no. Please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Perfect. Do I want to download my contacts? I'll say no to that one. It's not my car, but if it was yours, you could select that one. And then 911 assist. Definitely recommend turning that one on because if you're ever in a serious collision and your phone's connected, it's automatically going to dial 911 for you. Just hit finish and just a second there, we are fully connected. So you can see what's currently going on. You've got recent calls, phone keypad list. You can dial in there as well. You've got Siri Assistant and on top of that. So you can do a press and hold on the steering wheel if you wanted to activate your Siri Assistant that way, which is kind of cool. But one thing about the vehicle, so about the Sync 3 screen, is that it's got support for Android Auto Apple CarPlay. Inside of the Sync 3 screen, it is a wired connection. So you need a USB cable. In order for it to work, you need it to be a data connection cable too. So you can make out, maybe just make it out the little data icon there. So it needs to be one of these data USB icons in order for it to actually transfer data. So if you're trying to connect to Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and it's not working, that's usually like the first thing I would recommend is just making sure you're using the right type of cable. Now, just down the center stack there and plug ourselves in, opposite end of the cable, in we go. 
And in just a second, perfect, there we go. Apple CarPlay, let's continue. It should be a few seconds there. Do I want to allow CarPlay while the phone is locked? Yes, let's allow that. And boom, fully connected. Beautiful, though. it's nice. Along the outside, you've got current time and connection level. What map application was open last, what audio application was last opened, and then miscellaneous application. This brings you back to this little home screen, or you can go to a little icon view instead. But you can also kind of swipe between these different screens if you wanted to. Both Google Maps, well, I guess all Google Maps, Apple Maps, and Waze, on the Apple CarPlay side of things, there's no pinch to zoom capability. So you have to zoom in and out this way. You can look at destinations, search for addresses, etc. It's the same way with Google Maps. So you hop in and you could zoom in and out this way. You can avoid things on the route. So if you wanted to avoid highways, toll roads, ferries, and things like that, you'd have that flexibility. And then Waze, same idea. So there's dragging capabilities, but, oh, there we go. Dragging capabilities, but if you wanted to be able to zoom in and out, we're going in and out that way instead. Button press back home. And then you've got, I mean, obviously all of your podcasts, so browsing history, listening history. There's a ton of different applications that are supported through Apple CarPlay. Not a ton, but just the basics. And like I said, there's no video playback features on here whatsoever. So even certain apps that you'd think that video would be available, the screen itself doesn't support video playback, unfortunately. Now, one thing you can do with a phone though, is that if you go into your phone settings, go into general settings, CarPlay, and then find your vehicle, you can either have it forget the car, you can allow CarPlay while the phone is locked, or you can customize. So let's see if you're a fan of having your podcasts up there along with your audiobooks, you can do that. If you want to remove them, you could. It gets rid of them from the screen completely. And then it does keep them in here though. So if you wanted to add them back in, you could. But if you've played around with this too much and you don't like all the drag and drops that you've done, just do a reset in order to bring this back to the factory default screen there instead. Very straightforward. And then if you wanted to hop back into the sync home screen, you're just going to hit this little button there and that brings you back to this screen. You can jump back into CarPlay now by pushing the button there hop back home, or you can go into CarPlay preferences. So you can remove the phone, you can toggle off CarPlay. So if you wanted to be physically connected in order to charge up, but you don't want to use CarPlay, you can just toggle it off there. And it's just defaulted you back to your factory settings there instead. So as you can see, connected back through Bluetooth again. So if you go into settings, phone, you can view devices. If you've got multiple phones connected to the vehicle, you can look at all of your contact options and things like that, but view devices, you can see there, currently connected to the phone, you can disconnect it or completely remove it. So it's that straightforward, setting up an iPhone inside of the Explorer. Setting up an Android is the exact same process. So if you weren't on this main screen, what you could do is you just jump back into settings, phone, view devices, and then you could- Search for your vehicle on your device and select it once it is found. So just adding in there. And then same idea, we're looking for Ford Explorer. Confirm that the pin displayed on sync matches the pin displayed on your device. Pins match up and connected. Do I want to allow access to messages? For your no. safety, please stay alert to changing road conditions and use sync's voice activated features while your vehicle is in motion. Perfect. Contact download. I'm going to say no because it's not my car, but obviously if it was yours, you would say yes there. And then do you want to save it, set it as a favorite? So if you've got multiple phones connected, you can have it set as a favorite for who gets connection priority. Hopping into the phone though, you can see that we are connected to the other phone, so the Samsung instead, but it's straightforward. You're fully connected. You've got your keypad, voice assistant, and things like that. So you can push and hold on the steering wheel if you wanted to activate your different assistant that way instead. Now that one, if you're just connected over Bluetooth is Bixby. So you, it's unfortunately not gonna be the Google Assistant. So if you wanted to use the Google Assistant, you actually have to hook up through Android Auto. So on that note, let's hook up through Android Auto using that data-friendly USB cable. Opposite end of the cable and in. Perfect. There we go. Android Auto. So let's continue and next. Agree. Should be a few seconds there. Boom. And we are fully connected. Perfect. So you can see there, there's a little split screen. But if you hit the map, that's going to push you into this full screen instead. And one nice thing, Android Auto. Pinch to zoom capabilities on Google Maps, which is great. Pushing this little icon along the bottom gets you to the split screen again, or a little icon view. 
back into that little split screen. So you've got map applications, phone, you can customize a little bit. And then you've also got the Google Assistant, the true Google Assistant there. So you have to be fully connected through Android Auto in order to use the Google Assistant, but you still do have that flexibility though, which is kind of nice. But back home, you do have Waze and then Google Maps that are available. Now, if for whatever reason Waze isn't showing up for you, check down in the description of this video. I've put together a little walkthrough explaining how to get Waze on Android Auto, but it's relatively straightforward to do. But there are so many things you can do. Maps, there are a series of different apps that you can use inside of this thing too. But if you want a full look at the apps that are available, you'll find that in the description. But I mean, you can see there, avoid toll roads, ferries, fuel efficient routes, whatever the case may be. Super straightforward, which is nice. You can go back home to this mini view. And then if you wanted to, you can hop back into that forward home screen instead. And then hopping back into Android Auto, you can go Android Auto, Android Auto preferences to toggle off Android Auto, remove the Galaxy, etc., Or hop back into the Android Auto system instead, listening to podcasts and music, whatever the case may be. You do have the option of using some Android Auto settings to customize this a little bit. So you're gonna search for Android Auto on your phone, go to Android Auto settings. And when you do that, you've got a series of different options that are available. So the big one to look for here is Customize Launcher. So you're just gonna go Customize Launcher. You've got all of the different applications here. So you can just do a drag and drop in order to be able to customize it. But it's not dynamic like it was on the Apple side. So you actually have to get out of Android Auto on the screen here and shut it down here relaunch for any of those changes to take into effect. But you still do have the flexibility of customizing this a tiny little bit. Now if you, let's actually go back home as of right now, so fully connected. So I'm going to go into my Android Auto preferences, toggle off Android Auto for a second. I'll show you why. So if we go into settings now, hopping into phone, you can view devices, manage contacts and things like that. So if you wanted to connect it there, but you could disconnect, make it a favorite, or fully remove it from the vehicle. And then, same idea, you can connect or fully remove if you wanted to. So it should be a few seconds there and we're fully removed. So it's that easy setting up Android and iPhone devices inside of the Explorer. Right, and that's the basics of setting up a phone. Next up is factory navigation. So as I mentioned, factory navigation is not going to be standard inside of the screen, but it is available optionally from the factory or replacing the whole screen aftermarket. Searching for an address is straightforward. So you can search by GPS coordinates by going latitude, longitude. You can start typing in an address. You can search by point of interest icons there if you want to. Just gonna select one. There we go. And as you can see there, are a series of different options that are available. So I'm just gonna select one of these ones. As you can see, I can save it or just hit start in order to go to that destination. Please proceed to the highlighted route and then the route guidance will start. There we go. So you could exit out if you want to. You could zoom in and out that way, change up your heading along the bottom right side. If you wanted to mute guidance, so as you're coming to upcoming turns, turn yes or no, you could mute those if you want. You can push this little menu button to cancel the route, traffic list, look at notification settings. You can view the full route if you want to. As you can see there, full route. You can detour out if you wanted to. So it's going to give you detour options that are available. So you've got a few different options that are available there. Search for addresses, history, and a few other things. So moving back out, if you wanted to, you can cancel the route from the screen too. And when you do that, it cancels it out simply. Boom. You can go to menu now again, different settings. So the big ones here, screen view, if you wanted full map or exit info for the highway traffic list, whether or not that one shows up as you drive, yay, nay. Navigation settings. Okay, so there's a biggest few different ones here, but the big one will be in root preferences. But the neat one here is breadcrumbs. So with this one turned on, as you start to go and start driving around, you're going to notice little dots on all the areas that you've gone to. So it's essentially think like Hansel and Gretel. So it shows you the different places that you've been. Route preferences, you can use either the fastest, the shortest, or the most eco-friendly route. And then other ones to look at. Avoid things. Here we go. Do you want to avoid freeways, toll roads, tunnels, and things like that? So I'd say those would be the big ones to really worry about. And then that's going to dynamically update your route based off of what you've chosen. So if you wanted to avoid toll roads, you can select that. 
Other one, navigation. So it's the same idea with the prompts. Do you want to get voice and tone, strictly a voice or strictly a tone when you come to an upcoming turn? Okay, and next one, home and work address. So if you set up a home or work address, you can hit the voice command prompt and you can say navigate home, navigate to work, whatever the case may be. And that'll navigate to whatever addresses you've saved there. And we did look at navigate, or we did look at some options there too. So we've got a few different ones there. So you could delete out if you wanted to delete your history of places that you've gone to. It's just a general safety setting. But that's the basics of factory navigation. There's not a ton to it. Like I said, you can do a little bit to it here. You can kind of do a drag and drop if you wanted to figure out the rough area that you have to go to as well. It's just kind of neat. But just hit start, back home, really simple. Moving into app screen, so you can add in a device, Sirius XM travel link. So if you've got a Sirius XM connection, you can go there to set the travel link up as well. And then you've got a series of different settings. So as of right now, audio is off. That's why it's grayed out. So if you ever notice that happens, it's because the audio is turned off. But jumping into sound settings, you've got the option of adjusting a few things. I always recommend treble down by two, bass crank by three. Generally gives pretty good audio. You can adjust out the balance and fade. So if you're the only one in the vehicle versus if you wanted a full audio experience instead, or if you wanted to give people a little bit more and kind of save your sanity, you've got that flexibility as well. Speed compensated volume. As you're going faster or slower, it's automatically going to raise or lower the volume for you. Next up, clock settings. So you've got the option of changing out hours, minutes, flipping between AM, PM. If you prefer the military time instead, you could adjust it out. Auto daylight savings time. So if you wanted to automatically have the vehicle adjust the time based off of daylight savings, yay or nay, and then auto time zone update. So it's recognizing me in Eastern time. But let's say if you're kind of teetering on the border of a time zone and you're finding the times flipping all over the place, you can just turn it off there instead. So I know that some people, if, if you're kind of straddling a time zone, it might flip between the different zones all the time. So that's how you can disable that one. You could just click on the clock there through settings or if you press the clock along the very top, you can get into the clock settings there instead. Bluetooth. You can toggle Bluetooth off, or you can add in a Bluetooth device. You can add in a phone there. Looking at some driver assistance settings, you've got a series of options. So you've got three different types of cruise. Normal is exactly that. It's like your old school cruise control. Versus adaptive is your set it and forget it cruise. So you set it at 100 kilometers an hour on the highway. If the car in front of you slows down, yours is going to break. If they change lanes, pick up speed, get out of the way, it'll pick you right back up to your set speed again. And then there's also the intelligent cruise control, which is based off of a tolerance level. So if you've got the adaptive cruise control system turned on and you've got the tolerance level set at zero, if the speed goes from, let's say, 100 down to 80, it's automatically going to slow the vehicle down. And it works the other way, too. So if it goes from 80 to 100, it's automatically going to speed the vehicle up. But that's based off of your tolerance level. Like if you're okay being under 10 kilometers an hour or over 10 kilometers an hour, whatever the case may be, it's going to go plus or minus that way instead. But it is a very useful system. And it's kind of weird the first time you have it happen, but it is really nice, especially if you've got a lead foot. Lane keeping system works three different ways. So the first way is it going to be an alert. So if you start to veer over into a lane without signaling, it's going to give you a little bit of a steering wheel shake, almost as if you're running over rumble pavement. The aid is actually going to nudge you back into your lane, and the alert and the aid will do both. So as you start to veer over without signaling, it's going to give you a steering wheel shake, and then it's going to bump you back into your lane again. And then the alert intensity, so that's the intensity of the steering wheel shake that you get. Pre-collision assist, just a bunch of like basic warnings here. So if you want the vehicle to actively brake for you, if there's a potential front end collision, Evasive steering means that the steering wheel is more or less turned into like a hypersensitivity mode. So it's easier to get out of the way of a potential obstacle a little bit easier. Speed sign recognition, whether or not you want that one on for a warning, if you want it to automatically give you a little bit of a beep, yay, nay. I'm not a fan of that one, so I'm just going to say no to that. Rear view camera, you've got the delay. So as you go to drive, so if you're in reverse and you go to drive, the rear view camera will stay on for a second at a lower speed blind spot system. So if somebody's entered the blind spot on either side of the vehicle, that's going to highlight orange to let you know. Trailer blind spot's a cool one because if you've hooked up a trailer, not only is it going to watch for the distance behind the vehicle for your blind spot, but it extends back to cover the full length of the trailer there too, which is kind of cool.
trailer sway control. So if the vehicle recognizes there's trailer sway going on, it's going to automatically apply engine braking to get that trailer sway under control. Parking aid is the beeping that we get as you back up. So whether or not that one happens, you could toggle it off if you want to. Cross traffic alert. As you go to back up, if someone's coming perpendicular, so from the left or right side, it's going to tell you of a potential collision and then driver alert. So if you start to veer over too many times of that signaling, eventually it's going to tell you you should probably take a break. Some basic options for vehicle settings. So 30 minute max idle. Definitely recommend turning that one off if you're going to a drive in. But otherwise, 30 minute max means that the vehicle is going to turn off after 30 minutes if it's just sitting there idling. Rear occupant alert. If you go to turn the vehicle off, it's going to tell you to check the back seats. My key lets you give limitations to a key fob, so you'd be able to limit things like max speed, max audio volume, and things like that. Remote start. Do you want to turn off remote start? But if you use remote start, what happens? Is it going to change climate based off of your last settings, or do you want the vehicle to determine what the climate should be inside the vehicle? Same idea for the heated steering wheel or the heated seats if your vehicle has it. Do you want the car to automatically turn them on for you, or nothing happened there? And then how long does the remote start last? So for 5, 10, or for 15 minutes? A few different options there. And next up, options for wipers. So the big one there, courtesy wipe. Yeah, uh, with the courtesy wipe is if you've got your windshield wipers going, at the end of the wipe cycle, it'll go one more time to get rid of what, any excess liquid that might be on the windshield. Rear wiper when in reverse. So if you are actually in reverse with your wipers going and you put your car into reverse, it's going to turn on the rear wiper for you automatically. You can toggle the power liftgate switch off on the outside. So if you wanted to just be manual liftgate instead. Options for lighting, auto high beam. So what that does is if you're in the auto mode for your lights and the vehicle recognizes that it needs the high beams, it's going to turn them on automatically. If there's a car oncoming, it's going to lower the beams for you and then bring them right back on again. And then auto lamp delay. When you go to lock the vehicle, do the lamps stay on for 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 120 seconds, or do they just turn off automatically? Options for your locks. So the big ones here, remote unlock. When you go to unlock the vehicle, do all doors become unlocked or is it just the driver's door? And then mislock chirps and things like that. So mislock chirps is that if you go to shut a door and then lock the vehicle, if it's not fully shut, you're going to get a little chirp and let you know that you haven't shut the door properly. And then keypad code. So there's a five digit factory number that you can use. And then if you ever wanted to get into the vehicle without your fob, you can enter in that five digit factory number, or you can set up your own unique five digit numbers there instead. There's a series of general settings. So do you want to be in English, Spanish, or French, Celsius or Fahrenheit? Do you want to be in kilometers and liters per hundred miles per gallon, etc.? The beeping that you're getting there, if that drives you nuts, you could toggle it off if you want to. And then the other one to point out, reset. So Ford Pass is an app on your phone that you can use in order to remote start your vehicle and a few other things. But if it's giving you problems, you could do a reset there. And then if you're selling your Explorer, just do a master reset to bring it back to the factory default instead. Wi-Fi and automatic updates go hand in hand. So I definitely recommend connect to a Wi-Fi network at home, but make sure that you also turn your automatic updates on. So just automatic updates turned on. And the big reason why is because with automatic updates turned on, it's automatically going to scan to see if the vehicle needs an update. And then if it does, it's going to update it for you automatically. 911 assist. If you're in a, if your phone's connected and if you're in a major collision, it's automatically going to dial 911 for you. Android auto and Apple CarPlay are dynamic buttons. So you can toggle them on or off. You can also remove. And when you do watch this, it gets rid of the buttons completely. That doesn't mean you can't use Android Auto or Apple CarPlay anymore. If you go to set your phones up again, it will show up. It's just that if you want to clear up your icon tray, you could do that if you want to. With the display, as big and as bright as this thing is, if it's too much, you can toggle the whole thing off if you want to. Button press to bring it back to life, or you can turn it into a calming screen with just the date and time. Same idea, button press to bring that back to life again. Hopping into settings and display. So this one technically is the daytime mode that we're looking at, but you can have it permanently lock out to day or nighttime, just depending on your own personal preferences. I personally love that blue, so I would lock it out to that permanently, but you can go either or. It's just that in the auto mode, like I said, it'll automatically flip between day or night, depending on how bright it is outside. 
and then you can adjust the brightness and then background there are a few very subtle color differences that you can select if you want to voice control so by pushing the voice command prompt on the steering wheel that's going to give you access to the command list and there are a series of different things like you can do so you can change songs radio stations navigate using your voice and a few other things phone confirmation do you want to call such and such person when you make a phone call and then advanced mode means you won't get as many notifications so let's say if you were to tune to 94.9 fm tuning to fm 94.9 so it changed stations for me, but I got a notification letting me know that it was doing it. So if you had advanced mode on, it would just do it and not tell you that it was doing it, which is kind of nice. Valet mode gives you the flexibility of entering in a four digit number to lock the screen out. So a valet driver can't look through your previously traveled to destinations and home and work addresses and things like that. So it's very straightforward to use. All you do is yes, yes, enter in a nice difficult password. Don't use 0000, but as you can see there, fully locks out the screen until you re-enter that four digit number again. Next up is going to be navigation settings, which we've already seen these. So map, route, and navigation preferences. So I know that's quite a little bit of information, but that's everything you need to know about the Sync 3 screen inside of the Ford Explorer.